Welcome, everyone, to the general gaming channel known as M12 Warthog Game. Hey guys, M12 Warthog Game here. I'm back with another video, and today I'm playing some more Civilization Revolution, and we are doing the next episode of Strategy Guide for Civilization Revolution. This was going to be my third episode, but I recorded two yesterday. And the second one did not come out well with the audio and whatnot, but I realized I recorded that that second part anyway, and failed to realize that that part is actually very different. Is the that that like next twenty minutes after what happens after the first one is really more situational based. So if you're not in the same situation as me, then it's not going to do much, and it's really just you pointing out the obvious. If more people move. Armies towards the borders, then you move more armies to the borders. If they don't, then focus on more things, such as building, building like buildings within your towns and getting them stronger and more towards city growth. But it's a little bit different depending upon which, which faction you are and whatnot. But um, it's pretty simple if you are playing as Romans, as city building is actually comes naturally easy. For many of you. Now, I believe I have, um, a warrior army and an archer army in each city. Now I'm going to try and arm it each with a pikeman and a legion. So, we're going to hopefully get that done and out of the way. Because, let me think here. I know I have archers there. And, yeah, so this city needs a legion in, in pikemen. This one needs, um, legions and pikemen as well. And then I think this one, yeah, so they all need a legion and a pikemen. Now, of course, what I'm building here is a courthouse, which is one of the most important things you can build as it expands the amount of, amount of, um, tiles your city can use, which will be very effective. As you can see here, for an example, this town, I mean city of Syracuse, there are three rings around it. What those three rings mean, well, well, there's like three people inside, and there's like one ring around it. Sorry, I was paying attention to how many workers we actually have working on the inside. Now, what that means is that we have eight tiles around it, which is the base city. Now, you can expand out more. Two to, two to the sides, and two up and down. But although we are, this is the boundary limit, we won't be able to make use of it. But that is fine. It's actually not a big deal. As we needed a third city, at least. And we started one here. We didn't know what was beyond there until we actually got a water unit or we got our tile down here um, filled in. But I believe I do not need three people working inside. Maybe two, because this town has low production, and it's still complete. We'll still complete Pikeman next turn, and we're getting just two more science. So if I think about it, this town is producing more science than this one. This one has palace, temple, library, walls. Has the same number of um things as this one. Library workshop. And that one increases building production. Oh, maybe I get more science because I actually have workers within side as well for trade. I think that also is affected too. I could be wrong about that. Um as it's been a while since I've played, but I definitely know the strategy to this. So, continuing from here, you will want to save up money, and if possible, rush courthouse, because the faster you get that, the better off you are. Although, I may not want to rush it, as I want to wait at least until I get to a city level of 8. That way, next time when we actually grow to another level, we can automatically use those extra tiles that we are getting. 
Now, of course, I got my galley here. And I'm going to be using this to explore other areas. Hopefully, we can get many things done in terms of exploration with them. Now, I'm going to pike men. We got to... Um... Okay, so... Those are pretty much going to stay there. I built the legion, but I sent that out to my um, border. Um, what do I need now? I need, um, pikemen. Yeah, I'm gonna have to wait five turns for that. But I'm really curious to see what's out here. I may have to go back down and over this way, because my galleys cannot go in water. Deep water, that is. Okay. So far, looking at this, we are ahead by one in terms of cultural victory. We have two right behind us. We have a huge lead in technology, which means we could go for technology victory. Um, economic, far from it, but someone else could get that. But, um, when paying people to go to war with you, to side with you, or, like, you have a feeling that someone's about to launch war at you, you want to distract them instead by having someone else go to war with them, you can do that via a bribe for, um, bots, but... You want to make sure, because it's a couple hundred, and if you get a couple hundred, you can easily get a few milestones. Well, a few of the early milestones, the later ones, require a buttload of money. And that's what I used to determine, well, I know I'm on good terms with these two people, but, like, Civilization A is closer to economic victory than Civilization B. Civilization A wants to probably get... Closer to that next milestone, so they're probably going to ask for more money. Civilization B is farther away, and I can give them money, and I don't have to worry about Civilization A getting much closer to economic victory as much as I do with Civilization B, and I can still pay them off, and they'll go to war for five turns with whoever I feel like, provided that they actually have met that empire or civilization or whatever. They have to actually meet them face-to-face -face and know where they are. The chances are, from the way that I have this set up, okay, currency will be done in two turns. I actually would rather have that. From the looks of it, this is the capital of the Indians, and this is Zimbabwe, which is the capital of the Zulus. So, from the looks of it, I could go... From the looks of it, if I talk to them, that we've been at peace since 3800 BC. <clears throat> yes, let there be peace. If I select no, your presence offends me. We automatically say we're sorry and we that we still want to be at peace with them because, remember, I have a democracy government now. Um, discuss world events. Now, in this one, I can talk to them about the Indians, which is the only one that that they know of, and they can tell you one thing. We enjoy a uh, friendship with them. That they have two units stationed in Dekka, which is apparently town. Now, they didn't say that they would offer to go to war with them, which means they are on very good terms with them. So if they are on super good terms, they're not going to offer you any... We could go screw around with these guys and distract them for you if you pay us. They won't do that if they are on good terms with them. But if they were on shitty terms with them, you bet your ass they're like, Hey, you want to you wanna do this? Or if they were already at war with them, they would say, Hey, we'll pay you a bunch of money to hop, in, hop into war with us against them for a few turns. But then again, I can't go to war against them. They have to declare war against me because, well, you know democracy government and all of that but you know that's just the drawbacks of having that but the the plus side is good with all the extra trade that we're getting and whatnot so what i'm going to do is keep having this galley explore that's main thing you want to do now of course that will be complete in two turns eight turns for courthouse what do i want to and now we're making more, um, now that we've grown in population, our biggest producer of science points is our capital. 
And it probably, no matter what you do, it most likely, it seems like your, your, um, capital will produce the most in terms of gold or, um, gold or science as they are usually going to be the biggest city as they grow. As it's your first city they set down. But, um, there can be some times where it's, where it doesn't affect like that. As for an example, say like, I give this city a great person that will inc permanently increase our gold. Give us all wonders that have to do with gold into one city that produces it. And that city is going to produce more than our capital could ever would. But on a standard basis of if you put your, put your capital in a decent place, then you can do that. So what I'm going to do is move all these great people... <clears throat> Or great people, as they call them, into into uh, my boat, and I'm going to take them back to my civilization. Another thing I like to note is that you can only use their abilities if if your Greek person is within your city, as far as I know. Now, mathematics, we could get a catapult, so I'm going to do that. Now, of course, my Rangers militia are going to be in there. Now, the one thing that I should note is that we got a cavern or, um, caravan. <clears throat> and I'm going to move that right here on my legions unit. Next turn, I will be able to move into Zimbabwe and trade with them. Now... That is going to be mutually beneficial for both of us. Me and them, and I'll talk in more detail about that. Also has to do with a wonder that you can get as well, which will actually benefit you even more. So what I'm going to do is I almost entered Civilopedia, which you can also go to if you want to look up what specific um, great person you found and what what effect they've had on history, which I've read about most of them, because they're actually quite interesting if you have a love for history as such as I do. But, but that's besides the point. So, <clears throat> now I'm going to move my pikemen army here. Now, the reason I'm putting pikemen here over my, um, instead of to my capital is because this city, Antietam, is pretty much closer to the border, an enemy border, well, not an enemy border, but another civs border than my capital. And most people don't have naval capabilities yet, from what I've seen. So, them being able to attack Rome, not a big deal. Nor my other city, so. I'm going to offload my great people and then send this ship back out to explore. Now it's going to go up and around the deep water. Add one population to each city. Or... Immediately, 50% population growth. Now I'm going to increase population by one to each city, which means we each have one new tile that we can make use of. It can also be good. That means if we have any extras... Which now we're at nine. That means that any extras would would be added to work within the city, and that means you get plus one um production done if you have that. Now what I'm gonna do is see what this one does. This one also adds one population to each city. But I'm gonna actually settle this one and permanently increase our growth by fifty percent. So. My guess is by growth of 50%, that means population growth in two turns probably would have been four turns if it was not for my great person. Also, if you hold down left trigger, you can keep track of who you have in your cities. Rome has a humanitarian. We have a builder in Syracuse. In Tidum, we have none. 
But, you know, maybe one day we'll get another great person. Which, actually, you can find them, capture them, or get them if you get enough culture points. So, slowly, you build up culture and the amount of culture that you get. So, when we get 816 culture is when we get another great person. But the sad thing is, is that... Getting, finding, coach, um, great people does not affect your cultural victory. You have to earn these great people by getting enough culture points. Just finding them because of some artifact or capturing them does not increase your culture level. Which mine is currently at 2. Needs to be at 20 before I can build the, build the, um, United Nations Wonder and unite all the nations and declare peace. In a peaceful victory, which, um... Is not available at the moment. So. Now I'm going to take this legion. And see where I need to put it. This is the only city that has. Two armies. While all the others have at least three. So. To divvy up the units. I'm going to move that one. Down there. Now we got pikemen. Working. We got a courthouse and. Five turns, pikemen three, next legion in two. Legions actually cost only five production, while pikemen cost more. They cost 15. So it won't actually let you go directly into the city. You have to wait. You have to be one, one tile outside, then move in. Now we get a total of 60 gold, and they get a import tax of 20 so that import tax does not come away from our 60 we get 60 they get 20 it's not like oh we get 40 because they took 20 gold as tax no that that that's separate from at least from what i can understand and that mutually beneficial because they're like oh they like us they helped us get money that's a good civilization they're friendly with us and that will make them less likely to attack you although if you get too close to victory tensions Tensions start to heat up, and, well, they'll eventually just stay at war with you until, um, they prevent you from getting a victory, or, um, or, um, you stop going for that victory, or you completely demolish them in battle, or whatever it may be. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to go for is university. So, what I'm gonna do, I could rush this. So, let me see here. What do I have here? I have an extra settler's unit, which I got for having over 100 gold. So, let me think here. That's eight. That's six. So, you wonder what I'm going to do. Normally, I would get at least four cities, but having three is fine. You can do it just as well. I'm going to have a joined city, and it fills the bar up. So, that means no matter what next turn... They are going to get, they're going to get, um, whatever. Or house production completed, they're going to go up in that. Okay, now that we are at pretty much just going to be at about 10, maybe 11, now I'm going to build the Hanging Gardens, which add 50% to our population. So if we're at 10, we automatically go up 5 levels. Now, of course, I'm not going to make any catapults, so I'm just going to cash this in for the gold. If you have any old units that can't be formed into armies, such as riflemen that can't be formed into any of your modern infantry armies, just click the right stick over it and just sell it for, for coins, because it's just going to be not as strong if it's a single unit. But if it's a whole entire army, you might want to reconsider. Although you get more money if you were to cash in the whole army and whatnot. So, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed up the production here. Because once I get one more legion, which can be done in two turns, maybe I'll have enough production to where from the next turn that I can actually make make a brush it next turn and start building. Um, Probably start building a granary because this grows at a slow rate. And then maybe... um. And then maybe a market. 
then a workshop, and then courthouse. This courthouse is going to take forever with the amount of production that city has. But you know, that's just how the game is. Okay. So. Like I said, I can rush that. Building. Granary. This town's making, like, little to none when it comes to culture, so I'm gonna have to build a temple as well. So now I'm gonna keep this as an offensive unit in my city. And the reason why I keep offensive units in my city as well as defensive is most people see it as one of the most pointless things to do. But here's the thing. Most people think that you should keep them on the borders. That way you can be ready to strike. But if you're not at war with them, there's no reason to. And two, if they break through your defensive line, which is through mostly defensive-based units or units that have a higher defense than they do attack, they'll probably be weakened from that battle and they'll probably be wounded soldiers that are within your territory. And you can counterattack with your offensive... Um, Better performing units that are better at offensive than defensive, which can counterattack them right from your city. So if they're sitting outside your city and they are weakened, but they're playing on like maybe healing them next next turn. Even if they heal them, you got a assault unit ready to go, and that's one of the main things that I do. So ass assault units, and don't even go near. Begin to go near my place. When I'm doing that, when what, don't even begin to go near the borders unless I'm at war with someone. And I usually don't try to be at war with someone. Okay, granary, five turns, not bad. This one actually has less production, and we have like four people working in here. Actually, we have four people according to this working within here, and I don't. Really like it that much. So I'm probably gonna get keep it at two. You wanna know what? We get more food production. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. And I think I'm gonna have to rechange what I'm doing. Okay, so greenery, temple, market, workshop, and courthouse. Or actually, no. A instead of that, after we finish greenery, we're going to do workshop as that will give us more production. And then that will speed up our temple, our market, and our courthouse production. Or how fast or how long it will take them. Okay. Okay. Pikeman unit, four turns. Granny, four. Hanging gardens is five. Now that's to be expected. <clears throat> okay. We have only one vendor that's giving us plus one science, plus one production. So what I'm going to do... Is I could make him instead make us lose one production but increase our science by two. But I think I'm gonna keep him there. When I get an iron mine, which increases the amount of production you get from mountains, I'll make use of my mountain tile. But for now, I'm gonna stick with this. Wait out maybe one or two more turns. To see what we can see if we can rush our units. And now. The next step is, I just pretty much have to explore the ship at the moment. Okay. First, we discovered university. As a result, we received plus one science in each city. All right, that's a permanent bonus. So, what do we want? Um, navigation is the shortest one, and having gallons, which can actually go in deep water, would be more beneficial. I'm going to rush this. 
Now we have our own there. Now that we have that done, I'm going to make a temple here. Because maybe some more, um, maybe some more, um, culture wouldn't be that bad for, for that city specifically. And another update on who's winning. We are leading technology, economic, and cultural victory. But, uh, anyway, guys, I think I'm gonna have to end this video here. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you did, leaving any comments, questions, or feedback for me in the comment section down below would be highly appreciated. And I will see you guys later in another video.